The elves sat on the grass and spoke together in soft voices. They seemed to take no further notice of the hobbits. Frodo and his companions wrapped themselves in cloaks and blankets, and drowsiness stole over them. The night grew on, and the lights in the valley went out. Pippin fell asleep, pillowed on a green hillock. Away high in the east swung Remirath, the netted stars, and slowly above the mists, red Borgil rose, glowing like a jewel of fire. Then, by some shift of airs, all the mists was drawn away like a veil, and there leaned up, as he climbed over the rim of the world, the swordsman of the sky, Menelvagor with his shining belt. The elves all burst into song. Suddenly, under the trees, a fire sprang up with a red light. Come, the elves called to the hobbits. Come, now is the time for speech and merriment. Pippin sat up and rubbed his eyes. He shivered. There is a fire in the hall, and food for hungry guests, said an elf standing before him. At the south end of the greensward there was an opening. There the green floor ran into the wood, and formed a wide space like a hall, roofed by the boughs of trees. Their great trunks ran like pillars down each side. In the middle there was a wood fire blazing, and upon the tree pillars torches with lights of gold and silver were burning steadily. The elf sat round the fire upon the grass, or upon the sawn rings of old trunks. Some went to and fro bearing cups and pouring drink. Others brought food on heaped plates and dishes. Well, this is poor fare, they said to the hobbits, for we are lodging in the greensward far from our halls. If ever you are our guests at home, we will treat you better. It seems to me good enough for a birthday party, said Frodo. Pippin afterwards recalled little of either food or drink for his mind was filled with the light upon the elf faces, and the sound of voices so various and so beautiful that he felt in a waking dream. But he remembered that there was bread, surpassing the savour of a fair white loaf to one who is starving, and fruits sweet as wild berries, and richer than the tended fruits of gardens. He drained a cup that was filled with fragrant draught, cool as a clear fountain, golden as a summer afternoon. Sam could never describe in words, nor picture clearly to himself, what he felt or thought that night, though it remained in his memory as one of the chief events of his life. The nearest he ever got was to say, Well, sir, if I could grow apples like that, I would call myself a gardener. But it was the singing that went to my heart, if you know what I mean. Frodo sat, eating, drinking and talking with delight, but his mind was chiefly on the words spoken. He knew a little of the elf speech and listened eagerly. Now and again he spoke to those that served him and thanked them in their own language. They smiled at him and said laughing, Here is a jewel among hobbits. After a while Pippin fell fast asleep and was lifted up and borne away to a bower under the trees. There he was laid upon a soft bed and slept the rest of the night away. Sam refused to leave his master. When Pippin had gone, he came and sat curled up at Frodo's feet, where at last he nodded and closed his eyes. Frodo remained long awake, talking with Gildor. They spoke of many things, old and new, and Frodo questioned Gildor much about happenings in the wide world outside of the Shire. The tidings were mostly sad and ominous, of gathering darkness, the walls of men, and the flight of the elves. At last Frodo asked the question that was nearest to his heart. Uh, tell me, Gildor, have you ever seen Bilbo since he left us? Gildor smiled. Yes. He answered. Twice. He said farewell to us on this very spot. But I saw him once again, far from here. He would say no more about Bilbo, and Frodo fell silent. You do not ask me or tell me much that concerns yourself, Frodo, said Gildor. But I already know a little, and I can read more in your face and in the thought behind your questions. You are leaving the Shire, and yet you doubt that you will find what you seek, or accomplish what you intend or that you will ever return. Is that not so? It is, said Frodo. But I thought my going was a secret known only to Gandalf and my faithful Sam. He looked down at Sam, who was snoring gently. <laughs> the secret will not reach the enemy from us, said Gildor. The enemy, said Frodo. Then you know why I am leaving the Shire. I do not know for what reason the enemy is pursuing you, answered Gildor. But I perceive that he is. 
Strange indeed, though that seems to me. And I warn you that peril is now both before you and behind you, and upon either side. You mean the riders? I fear that they were servants of the enemy. What are the black riders? Has Gandalf told you nothing? Nothing about such creatures? Then I think it is not for me to say more, lest terror should keep you from your journey. For it seems to me that you have set out only just in time, if indeed you are in time. You must now make haste, and neither stay nor turn back, for the Shire is no longer any protection to you. I cannot imagine what information would be more terrifying than your hints and warnings, exclaimed Frodo. I knew that danger lay ahead, of course, but I did not expect to meet it in our own Shire. Can't a hobbit walk from the water to the river in peace? But it is not your own Shire, said Gildor. Others dwelt there before hobbits were, and others will dwell there again when hobbits are no more. The wide world is all about you. You can fence yourselves in, but you cannot forever fence it out. I know, and yet it has always seemed so safe and familiar. What can I do now? My plan was to leave the Shire secretly and make my way to Rivendell, but now my footsteps are dogged before I ever get to Buckland. I think you should still follow that plan, said Gildor. I do not think the road will prove too hard for your courage, but if you desire clearer counsel, you should ask Gandalf. I do not know the reason for your flight, and therefore I do not know by what means your pursuers will assail you. These things Gandalf must know. I suppose that you will see him before you leave the Shire? I hope so. But that is another thing that makes me anxious. I have been expecting Gandalf for many days. He was to have come to Hobbiton at the latest two nights ago, but he has never appeared. Now I am wondering, what can have happened? Should I wait for him? Gildor was silent for a moment. I do not like this news, he said at last. That Gandalf should be late does not bode well. But it is said, do not meddle in the affairs of wizards, for they are subtle and quick to anger. The choice is yours, to go or wait. And it is also said, answered Frodo, go not to the elves for counsel, for they will say both no and yes. <laughs> is it indeed? laughed Gildor. Elves seldom give unguarded advice, for advice is a dangerous gift, even from the wise to the wise, and all courses may run ill. But what would you? You have not told me all concerning yourself, and how then shall I choose better than you? But if you demand advice, I will for friendship's sake give it. I think you should now go at once, without delay, and if Gandalf does not come before you set out, then I also advise this. Do not go alone. Take such friends as are trusty and willing. Now you should be grateful, for I do not give this counsel gladly. The elves have their own labours and their own sorrows, and they are little concerned with the ways of hobbits or of any other creatures upon earth. Our paths cross there seldom, by chance or purpose. In this meeting there may be more than chance, but the purpose is not clear to me, and I fear to say too much. I am deeply grateful, said Frodo. But I wish you could tell me plainly what the Black Riders are. If I take your advice, I may not see Gandalf for a long while, and I ought to know what is the danger that pursues me. Is it not enough to know that they are servants of the enemy? Answered Gildor. Flee them! Speak no words to them. They are deadly. Ask no more of me. But my heart forebodes that, ere all is ended, you, Frodo, son of Drogo, will know more of these fell things than Gildor and Glorian. May Elbereth protect you. But where shall I find courage? Asked Frodo. That is what I chiefly need. Courage is found in unlikely places, said Gildor. Be of good hope. Sleep now. In the morning we shall have gone, but we will send our messages through the lands. The wandering company shall know of your journey, and those that have power for good shall be on the watch. I name you Elf Friend, and may the stars shine upon the end of your road. Seldom have we had such delight in strangers, and it is fair to hear words of the ancient speech from the lips of other wanderers in the world. Frodo felt sleep coming upon him, even as Gildor finished speaking. I will sleep now, 
he said, and the elf led him to a bower beside Pippin. And he threw himself upon a bed, and fell at once into a dreamless slumber. <laughs>